They say, okay, uh, I kind of get what you're saying, but I just need something a little bit more concrete. All right, let me give you some examples. We're in a recession right now. I would imagine many of you are feeling the effects of recession. Let's talk about stewardship. You know, recessions are actually a good thing. They are. They really are. Why? Because uh, God uses it to expose our priorities. You know, when times are tight, which part of your budget gets reduced first? Is it your entertainment budget or your giving to the Lord's work? Does your budget, even in times of recession, reflect God's will for you to have and give the highest priority to laying up treasures for yourself in heaven? As Jesus taught in Matthew 6. Say, well, yeah, but that's... It's fine when I got, you know, a good steady flow. I got some savings and, yeah, I can give them. But, man, when times are tight, man, that's just asking a little bit too much. That's when you go to God's promises. You know it's God's will to give and give sacrificially, give out of grace and according to how he has prospered you. But that's when you go to God's promises. And there you'll find, for example, in Philippians chapter 4, 19, where where through Paul, he says, and my God shall supply all your need in Christ Jesus. He promises to give you enough for your needs, not all your wants, but your needs. And then there's this wonderful promise in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 8 through 11. Let me just read it to you. He says, and God is able, this is in the context of Christian giving, God is able to make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. And what is he saying? You may abound to be able, in other words, God will make sure you have enough to be able to give. He goes on, as it is written, and he quotes from the Old Testament to show this is an Old Testament principle as well as a new that he, that is God, has distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. And then he says, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You see, he's going to give you enough so that you can give so that you can grow in your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. So you see, God gets glory when he he gives you enough to be able to give to others because they give thanks to God too. What a wonderful promise. In other words, God promises to replenish and reward the Christian giver both in time and in eternity. Do you believe that promise? You see, so you latch on to that promise. And you hold on to it and you say, well, I need some confirmations. All right, let's look in the Old Testament. Consider how God provided for Israel in the wilderness, barren land. And what did, what did God do? He provided manna. They don't even know what it was. In fact, in Hebrew, it means, what is it? God provided it. He sustained them in a barren land. Think about Elijah the prophet. God told him, go preach about a coming famine, and then God would sustain him in a cave, by commanding the ravens to bring him bread. It's not hard for God to provide. So, well, how about New Testament? Okay, let's look at Paul's ministry. Paul knew the ups and downs of having abundance and having lack. And he said in Philippians chapter 4, verses 12 to 13, I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and in every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Often people quote that verse 13 out of context, and they just quote it isolation. In context, he's saying, hey, God has provided for me at times. I have abundance, and praise the Lord for that. Sometimes in my ministry, I miss out on a meal or two or three. But he sustains me, and I've learned through that that he strengthens me so I can endure whatever come my way. There's your confirmations. Take time to soak that in. Soak it in until you can then set out in obedience and you can give cheerfully out of, the, out of your heart without constraint, trusting the Lord to provide, to, to replenish you and reward you. Let me give you another example. We have a...